air on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m., or you can catch us on Sunday or Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And I'm Debbie Indahard Giordano, your co-host, along with Todd Flesner of Opus Advisors Mortgage. Hey, Deb. How you doing? How are you? Terrific. We're, uh, we're winding up the summer season here, and, uh, you know, looking forward to, oh, you know, the fall and, and all that comes along with that, back to school time. Right, right. So... Um, it's good to be here with folks, and I um, want to get a chance to introduce our guest today. We're, we're talking construction. Nice. Um, if you own a home um, and you've been in it for a while, or perhaps you're buying a home and you might be looking at doing some projects or fixing it up, and so um, I brought along the expert that I know, Brian Pratts of Pratts Construction. Great. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming. Um, why don't you just tell us a, a little bit about yourself? You know, uh, a lot of folks get to know a little bit about you. Uh, where'd you grow up? What's your background? How'd you get into construction? Sure. Yeah, well, actually, I was born and raised in the Bay Area. My, uh, my father's been doing construction just about 30 years, and so I grew up around construction, and uh, he actually immigrated here from Cuba, and his father was a businessman, and so... I think it was something inside my dad that just knew that he wanted to start his own business. He'd been working for a commercial contractor for some years and um, decided to start his own business. So when I was growing up, I was out there in the summers digging ditches and <laughs> getting to know the ins and outs of construction. So you, you literally have worked your way from the ground up in construction. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep, I've seen the, the bad parts and the good parts. We've, we've done a lot of it. So um, that's how I got into it. I didn't actually think I'd be doing this full time. Went to school, college around here. And uh, through okay. college, I got a job with my dad. And, okay. and he said, hey, let's... Uh, Let's see where it goes. And so now I'm out there running running the company and enjoying what we do in construction. So Great. Yeah. Well, Brian, let me ask you, what kind of special licenses or certifications do you need for the work that you're doing? Sure. So we hold a Class B uh, general construction license, and uh, that's what we need to, to do what we do. Okay, so as a general contractor, what, what does that really mean uh, for folks who may not be as familiar with the, the construction industry? What, what sort of role do you take on in the construction yeah. project? Yeah. So we, we bring everyone to the table um, that is needed to, to get a project up and going and see it all the way through to the end, and we manage that from start to finish. We also carry most of the trades. We're a little bit unique in that way where we carry um, a lot of trades in-house so we can control um, everything from timelines to budgets a little more closely um, and are able to move guys around fluidly. So that's how we uh, make projects happen. And uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of describes a little bit about the construction industry in general. What do you specialize in? Do you have a specialty? or? Yes, we uh, specialize in custom um, remodels, and uh, we also do some commercial, so we do light commercial. About 40% uh, of our business is commercial, but 60% is residential. That's where we gotcha. uh, really find our sweet spot. So we do, um, we'll come in and uh, help someone who just knows they want something different in their house, but uh, don't quite know what that is, or maybe think they know what it is, but we can come in and help kind of focus in um, what their best uh, what the best thing is for their for their needs, whether that's an addition or maybe we can work within the the confines of the home. The confines of the home and actually just kind of work with what they have and maybe get them exactly what they're looking take for. Take a wall out or do exactly. some redesigning from yeah, inside. Yeah, we can find more space that before nice. was just kind of wasted. So. Right, right. Good. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And so um, do you have like a, a limit or a, a minimum sort of project that you, you look at doing? Um, you know, a, a bathroom or a mm -hmm. kitchen too small as opposed to a whole house or... Yeah. yeah, no, we we go in and we do, um, we'll do anything from a, a bathroom remodel. Sometimes we even come in for um, for people and start with something where it's just a quick fix because they bought a new home and it has something that just needs to be taken care of right now, but down the line they'll have more work. So we'll come in, um, help them evaluate their home, and then do those small fixes all the way up to maybe it's time to tear down and, and rebuild new. So, so what, what would be then the most common remodeling projects that would you do, and how does that impact values? Like I said, many folks here are homeowners and they're watching the show. Um, where do you get the most value for the dollar that's spent? Absolutely, yeah, it's a good question. So in this area, 
bigger kitchens and master bathrooms. You can see a great return in those couple areas. They're bigger ticket items, but the return in general is very high on those um, on those few items, and those can greatly um, impact your home, even just for as you're living there. So mm -hmm. some people in this area um, find themselves in a place where I don't know that I want to move, so maybe I'll just stay in this house, and uh, and we can help them uh, build it not only for now, but then when they go to sell it, it'll be in a place where it's... Agree. Like Agree. Money. Yeah, good. Well, let's say someone's considering a project in their home and they're thinking about getting in contact with a, a general contractor. What are some of the questions that they ought to be thinking about and should they be asking if they're considering a, a construction project? Yeah, you know, really uh, my concern for most people is that they understand the process and so we want to come alongside them and walk them through what that process would look like um, in helping them find a budget in helping them um, find the right bringing the right people to the project um, so if they're out there looking for a contractor number one find somebody who's licensed and insured mm -hmm. and not only is the company licensed and insured but making sure that all of their employees um, are covered under that insurance mm -hmm. and that any subcontractor that's coming onto the project is also licensed insured and all of those guys that they have working for them are insured and that's that's something to just look out for because I come into a fair amount of situations through the year every year that uh, someone has found themselves in a place where um, something unfortunate happened on the project or they Correct. weren't able to finish because mm -hmm. they didn't uh, take those necessary steps wow. to, to verify everyone so yeah good that was, that was going to be kind of my follow-up question maybe what, why is that important because folks might want to cut quarters and maybe think they can save a little bit of cost by having someone that's unlicensed or um, why, why is it important to use someone who's got those credentials absolutely yeah well all of the liability will um, unfortunately a lot of it will go back onto them so the general contractor if I hired someone who was not licensed even though I'm licensed it would come back to me but if uh, if some of the damages exceeded my insurance it'll come back to the to the homeowner so you want to protect yourself uh, as the homeowner as much as you can and that's in making sure that everyone that's on the project is fully licensed and fully insured mm -hmm. um, so that so that God forbid anything happen out there that right. you're you're covered as a okay. homeowner. Well, th those are good points to keep under consideration. Both looking at um, the the project, the value that you get, maybe return on investment, and then how to pick a contractor. What has been your most rewarding project? The most rewarding thing is actually working with people um, just like you and me who have been working hard their whole life. Uh, they have a house. Uh, that's where they live every day and now they've finally saved enough money to do that project that they've dreamed about for years mm -hmm. and so we recently did one for someone who worked in the grocery business um, you know not just stocking every day for the past 20 years and saved money and their spouse works as a postal worker walking the streets every day delivering our mail that we all see and they have four kids at home they manage their schedule very tightly and now were able to remodel their house. They got their full kitchen remodeled, a bathroom that functions for them, and just kind of cleaned up the rest of the house. So seeing people like that get what they've really worked hard for is, nice. is the joy of what we do. Yeah. Good. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about insurance and, uh, and those sort of things. Another important part of uh, construction really is a permitting process, mm -hmm. um, which can impact your ability to resell a property if it's not permitted. But uh, talk about, um, specifically here in Milpitas, the permitting process. and. Um, and how does that work? Sure. In Milpitas is quite like a lot of other cities. Depending on the scope of work, um, it'll take a shorter amount of time to get a permit or a longer amount of time. But there's a process that every city, including Milpitas, has where we need to have the correct drawings to show them what we're going to be doing and, uh, and that everything is going to be safe for your home and uh, energy efficient. That's a big thing nowadays. So the city wants to look out for you. And so we just want to go through that process and make sure that it's as smooth as possible. It's something we take care of for you. Um, but go, Going back to the point you made about that couple that saved their money for 20 years to get that remodeling project, mm -hmm. um, how does somebody deal with the budget? Uh, do, do you bid that out and then let them know so that they can either save for that or go see Todd and do a refinance or something to get a home mortgage, a home equity line of credit. How, how does the budget work into how they're going to manage the project? 
So there's a couple different ways we go about it. One is you come up with a dream list and we price everything out. Then you look at it and pick and choose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and pick and choose what you get to do or you know what your budget is uh, going into it, how much money you want to spend, how much... Uh, and then work backwards for, from and that. And then figure out, and we take that same list, the dream list that you had, and uh, try to either figure out which projects to do and not to do right now, uh, potentially phase them out. So we do some projects where we remodel the master bathroom this year and the other two bathrooms next year, so save up. Um, or we work on uh, value engineering, figuring out what products, what finishes we use so that maybe we can get your whole list done, just not maybe with um, with the same products you were first envisioning. But there's so many products out there today that are available to us. We can help work within your budget to get as much done as possible. Okay. So, yeah. Terrific. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about kind of your, your future and your aspirations. So you have a family business. What do you, what do you hope to accomplish in your business? Yeah, so I, I think it's been uh, wonderful seeing how my father's uh, longevity with the company almost 30 years has been here and I've been with him just about 14 years so I would love to see it go another 30 years and hit that 60 year mark I know there's some other companies in the area that have done it and it's just it's wonderful to see um, and so I'd, I'd love to be a part of that but um, just continually doing what we've done well for years is take care of our clientele because um, we're all about referrals we don't uh, go out there advertising a lot it's, it's all word of mouth, and because it's been so successful, that's how we, we plan on continuing the business. So. Well, that's great. Well, listen, we do appreciate so much you coming, spending some time with us uh, this afternoon on the show. Um, if folks want to get in contact with you, could you please supply either a phone number, email, or website, whatever they want to? Sure. Yeah, you can go to um, Pratsco.com, P R A T S. Um, co.com or uh, give us a call at our office at 408-371-7080. Great. Great. Well, wish you continued success. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you being our, our guest today and uh, sharing a little insight with folks about the construction industry and uh, how they might consider uh, using a general contractor with their home. Thank you. Thank, Thank you both. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We are the rise to every challenge type. The nothing is impossible type. The type that knows the time will come when we put type one behind us. We're the plan for a cure type. The improve life along the way type. The type that will stop at nothing until type one becomes type none. All of us want to make a difference. As veterans, we committed to protect our country. We served and sacrificed for the things that mattered most. Those experiences shaped our lives, even if it isn't always obvious to those around us. And now that we've served, our commitments have taken on a new meaning. We're husbands, wives, parents, friends, and neighbors, but sometimes we still feel alone. We forget that our biggest challenge can be to ask for support when we need it. The Veterans Crisis Line is here for all veterans, service members, and their loved ones. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. Chat online at veteranscrisisline.net or text 838-255. It matters. The following is a public service announcement test to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before you head out on the water. Let us begin. Are you a pelican? Uh. Does this look like your house? Is this your idea of fishing with friends? Do you use your feet as fishing hooks? Are you your own boat? Do you have webbed feet? No, I mean like a... That's the one. Do you want this in your favorite lake? It. Yuck. Yike. No thanks, mister. 
Regardless how you answered, you need to be licensed and registered because it helps local conservation efforts protect the very natural resources you enjoy boating and fishing in for generations to come. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. Through the years, trends and styles may come and go. But the important things remain the same. Generation after generation, consistently there, creating moments and memories to last a lifetime. Like a true friend, the national parks have always been there for you. And now, you can be there for them. Support the National Park Foundation and help protect America's treasured places. I don't want another drinking man in my life. I want to feel more fulfilled. Does my happiness depend on whether someone else drinks? My pastor suggested I try Al-Anon family groups, and I'm glad I did. Are you troubled by someone else's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al-Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. In Vietnam, we took care of each other. In combat, you look out for your battle buddy. I do anything for my unit. When things get tough, it's great to know somebody's there for you. Every step of the way. DAV stands behind America's veterans to make their transition back home easier with free services and help getting the benefits they've earned. Help us fulfill the promise to our men and women who served. Go to DAV.org to learn more. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie and the Hard Giordano, along with Todd Lester of Opus Mortgage. And uh, we're here to do a short uh, market wrap-up for the month of September. So, Todd, um, Milpitas, city of Milpitas, I understand, is on the map. We are on the map. In fact, um, the recent survey was out about the some of the best places in America to live. The number... Um, 29 rated country or <laughs> to be town in the country in terms wow. of quality of life. Milpitas, wow. California. Well, well, uh, what did they come up with? Just quickly, what was the? Well, the, the number of things. They, they, they look at the, the quality of life, okay. um, schools, okay. opportunities for jobs, education, wow. um, and housing, and wow. yeah. crime statistics. And they put all that into a computer and it spits out for the small uh, towns and small cities from uh, the 25,000 all the way up to 100,000 in population, what are the best places in the country to that live? That is exciting. That's yeah. terrific. So Malpitas is a great place to work, live, and play, huh? It, it absolutely is, and it's now been confirmed. Now been confirmed. Um, well, before we head into some statistics real quick, credit scores. Credit, there's been some changes lately in um, what, Correct. what borrowers can do in, in order to hone their credit score, get it up a little Yeah, higher. actually some, some good things that, that are beneficial to borrowers. Oftentimes when I see a credit report, there are inaccuracies in there. Um, or an area that, that oftentimes will show up will be in the area of medical bills and collections. Ah. And those are, are notoriously inaccurate. And so the, the credit um, uh, algorithm has been tweaked a little bit so that they don't um, weigh that particular factor as much. Um, and so, you can know, a folks, person work through the credit bureau and get those things eliminated? Well, or? They, they they can, but the, the they can be really problematic. But sure. Um, you know, doctors practice medicine. They they you know our number one thing is they don't uh, collect bills real well. They turn those over to collection agencies and such. And so, um, getting some of those resolved can be a little bit problematic at times. So again, the, the credit agencies in response to that, knowing that. And knowing that uh, oftentimes there's some inaccuracies there, particularly when you're looking at, at billing um, for insurances okay. and some crossover with that. So I'm, I'm assuming uh, buyers can, when they pull the credit report mm -hmm. through you, you can go ahead and work through those processes yeah, with them. Absolutely. And if you happen to have a, one of those items on your credit, it's not going to impact you as much. Okay, super. Um, let's talk about interest rates real quick. Where are they going and where have they been? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they've actually been pretty stable. We've been in the low fours, about four and a quarter, nice. give or take here, for the last uh, little bit of time. Now, the big news is the Federal Reserve Board in their most recent meeting, uh, there was a lot of anticipation about what the future and what they're going to be doing with interest rates in the future. 
and they've continued to hold steady on their current language about interest rate policy. And so that's given a sense of uh, some calm to stability, the market, yeah. stability to the market. Perfect, great. All right. All right, well, um, we only have another minute or two, so can I go into some Please. housing stats? Yeah, how are we doing uh, here in Milpitas? Well, right, right here in Milpitas, uh, back in August of 2013, we had an average sales price for a single-family home of 704000 and a median price of 688000 uh, That's been changed to August of 2014 to 747000 for an average price. Median price, though, is still about the same, 661000 Now, the condos continue to uh, obviously continue to escalate, which amazes me, even though we have so much growth of the mm -hmm. condo um, product here in the city. But in, back in August 2013, average condo price was 472000 Median price was 473000 That has now jumped into this uh, August of this year to 550000 for an average price and 560000 for a median price. So that's terrific news. That's terrific. And, and that really that doesn't take into account the, the brand new condos that are coming to no. market. Those are existing condos that, have, existing, that are selling. That are selling, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, terrific. Well, thanks for the update on what's happening here in Milpitas. Yep. We're glad that folks have joined us. So um, if you have any questions or comments about the show, Todd, um, contact? Yeah, T. Flesner at opusadvisors.com. And I can be reached at Giordano, G-I-O-R-D-A-N-O, DJ at AOL.com. We'll be happy to answer anything you have a concern over or um, if you have a guest or somebody you'd like to have on the show, please email one of us. Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.